Hello, and welcome to another Tip of the Week. This week we're going to cover about three or four videos covering coordination between architectural, structural, and MEP for Revit. Uh, in these videos, we're going to cover different ways to interact with the different disciplines and tips and tricks on how to make that interaction uh, easier. So let's just jump in. What we'll do is we'll start with the architecture, and what we're going to do is set the architectural file up so it'll interact nice with structure and MEP and we'll then go to structure and MEP and see how it interacts with the architecture so all disciplines understand what each other is dealing with. So it'll be a few videos to go through all the parts but I think this will give you a good overview of how everybody works together using Revit. So let's jump in. I'm going to fire up Revit here. Now this is Revit architecture. And in Revit architecture I got this little floor plan. It's really not much going on here but it's a little building and it has a few levels and it actually has a few pieces of steel in it nothing real fancy. What we're going to discuss is what happens when this model gets linked into a Revit model, uh, like linked into something like structure or MEP. How do the other applications deal with the model? So we're going to go back to level one and we'll talk first of all uh, about different components. For instance, when I select an object like this wall and we go up top and we drop down element properties and we go to let's say instance, you'll notice in here it says non-bearing. By default when you link a model into Revit structure, any wall that is non-bearing is actually hidden. Only bearing walls show up, slabs and steel, etc. So it's important to know um, how this works. So this is an actually an important part if you're, let's say, transferring information over to the architect, if, uh, excuse me, the structural person. If they want to see all the walls in there by default, you set them all to, let's say, structural, one of these. Uh, they'll actually show up in their drawings. So uh, something to consider there and you'll see how as we go through that'll pop up. I'm going to hit OK on that. Now I'm going to take one of these exterior walls, not both of them, just one, or not all of them, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to set this to bearing. Alright. Now I hit OK on that and I'm just going to do one. And that is a reason so when we go into structure you'll see that, that that one wall shows up. So you understand how the architectural model ties in with the structural model. Okay, some other things here. When working with other disciplines, it's uh, it's nice if you set up work groups. And here's why. First of all, it makes it nice within the office, but it also makes it nice for collaboration. Let's take a look. I'm going to go up type to the collaboration tab. I'm going to fire off work sets. Now within work sets, when I fire this off, it's going to take the model and it's going to separate the levels and grids into one, let's say, work set or one group and all the remaining elements into another work set or group. Now I'm going to hit OK. Now at this point it's actually going through and adding an attribute to each one of these objects and saying whether it's part of the grid and level or is it part of the work set one. Now as it goes through it's going to take a moment to actually add the attribute to everything and it comes up like so. Now at this point it comes up and says OK shared levels and grids. Uh, is it edible? Yes. And Aaron's the owner. And we'll go down here, we have work set one. Now you can change these at any point in time. Now you'll notice I have some landscaping in here. Now it's it's popping up and propagating through all my views. And I want to kind of pull it back. So I don't want to see it it's showing up in all the views. Now I may have 40 or 50 views here, and when I put in a few trees, instantly they show up in all views. That can be kind of problematic, at least for me going and turn them all off. Turn them on and off. So let's take a look at a, tr a trick that we can use to organize them for you and for the structure and MEP people. I'm going to create a new work set here called Landscape. Now, here's a key. See visible by default in all views? I'm going to say no. What that's going to do is it's in essence if we were in AutoCAD it would say go through all the views and turn off those layers. Pretty slick. Now, I've created a landscape work set. The logic works kind of like layers in AutoCAD. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to hit OK. I'm happy with that. OK. Do I want to set the landscape as the current active work set? And I'll hit yes. What that means is anything that I create will be placed on that work set. And that's fine right now. now. I'll move these up and you'll see I have some trees. I'm going to grab these trees and grab these trees. And now I right click and I go to Element Properties and I scroll down here and you'll see Work Set 1. Uh, that's the general one. I'm going to go to Landscaping. Now by doing this, I hit OK, and you'll notice they disappear. And if I go to level two, they're well, notice they disappeared. Uh, if I go to my elevations, they disappear. 
So it's a quick way to globally turn things on and off. So I can turn them on and off. That's, that's a quick way to hide everything quickly. Now if I type VV, as in Victor, Victor, that'll open up our visibility graphics override. You'll see when you create work sets, it actually creates little subcategories. If I want to turn on all my landscaping, click, and I hit OK, and you'll see the landscaping turns on. So I could have 15 different objects on 15 different categories, and I could turn them on and off quickly with just a quick switch. That works out real well uh, just for in your office, not even uh, talking about what it's going to do for the other guys yet. So let's hit OK on that. OK, so we have control over different objects here. Now, just for simplicity, I'm going to break the building into a few different components. I'm going to go to level 1. And I have, for instance, the, the exterior skin. So I'm going to take the exterior skin and maybe all the ob objects associated with it. And I'm going to do a window. OK. Grab that. And I'll, again, go over here. And uh, we'll take these objects. Now, when I go to Change Work Sets, if I go to Element Properties, and I'm going to go Instance Properties. Notice how the work sets are grayed out. A good rule of thumb is, for the most part, is can I put it in back my pickup truck? Uh, for instance, I can take a wall, and the material it's a tangible item. I can touch it. Uh, so if I go to Instance Properties, you'll see that I can change the work set, or I can change different parameters of it. If I grab that window, grab the window, right? I go over here, and I say Instance Properties, and you'll see I can again change the work set. Things like tags, okay, just grab that tag, and I go to, let's say, Instance Properties, and you'll notice that no work set. See, it doesn't let me adjust a work set on that item. So when you're trying to do things globally, like let's say grab all these wall types, and I'm going to grab them just quickly now by using some other tricks. I'm going to select this wall, right click, and I'm going to go select all instances. That's one way of doing it, and it's going to grab all the exterior wall types. Now I could take those and put them on, let's say, exterior skin. So let's take a look on the whole process now. We go to work sets, we create a new work set. I'll call it exterior skin. And I'm gonna leave this visible in all views. Alright. I hit OK on that. Now I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to start sorting my model. Now I'll pick the exterior skin here, right click, and that's just a wall. And I'm gonna say First of all, select all instances. So it's going to go and pick them all out the model, which makes it nice. Now I may also hold the control key down, and maybe I'll pick uh, that window assembly there. If I can roll over and actually grab it. Okay, we'll come back to that. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to say Element Properties. It's a little off the screen. But I'll drop down here, and you'll see Work Set, and say you go to Exterior Skin. Another advantage of using Work Sets is different people can check things in and out. And also, like uh, XREFs, we can load only what we need and that's one of the real powers because if I'm not using certain things like landscaping I do not have to load it into my model currently and it doesn't take up RAM. So it's a real good aspect of using work sets. Now I've taken the walls and I think I've moved them to exterior skin. I'll check on that. Drop this down. Instance properties and we scroll down and we'll see where it is. See exterior skin. Great. Cancel. Now I'm going to do the same thing for a few more items in here. So I roll through, I'll tab, 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 till I get to the item that I want. Okay, and there I was at this point. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. I'm going to grab that. And we go down here, Instance Properties. And depending on what you grab uh, will depend on whether you can change it or not. For instance, if I tried to grab one of the single panels, uh, it won't let me. So let's try that again. I'll hit tab, tab. See the panel? So I go up here and I say, okay, I'm going to change that. But you'll notice that, again, the phase is locked. If objects are nested, uh, you can't change them. So that's another little tidbit about that. So we've taken that skin. The last thing would be Windows. Again, I'm going to right click. Uh, select all instances. Grab all the skin. And what I'm going to do is go here. And at this point, we'll say go to the exterior skin. We hit OK. Now, uh, by using this, this is going to give us the ability on large models to actually load and unload what we need. If we're working on, let's say, an 80 meg model, 90 meg, 100 meg, 125 meg, pushing the limits of Revit, what we need to do is break the model up. So we're only loading a certain amount of information into memory. For instance, if it's a large building, we may break it into levels. We may break it into, uh, you know, first floor interior, second floor interior. However, you want to break it up into the group that works best for you, because in the work set area. Besides being able to see it and edit it, here's the real key. 
I can take the landscaping and I can say no, don't open it. When I hit OK, it actually unloads it, so it's not loading that in the memory anymore. So as I go through, next time I open up, I can say only load what I need. So let's take a look here. Let's say, for instance, I'm just going to come in here and say exterior skin. No, don't load it. Okay, now I'm not using the grid. No. Now when I hit OK, the only thing that's going to be left is pretty much the interior walls. So I hit OK on that. See how it unloaded it? Now, for instance, if I was to go and uh, move around in 3D, you'll notice that in this view, this is all I have. Uh, so I'm not using a lot of memory. The trees on in, the exterior skin's not in. That's a, sim a simplistic model, but for the big for the big picture, you can understand the logic here, where we can unload parts of the model. Here's a good analogy. In AutoCAD, you may have 20 or 30 XREFs that you use on a project. You would not load all 30 of those XREFs into one drawing file and expect to do anything because all 30 of them would use up all the system resources and you'd just be bogged down. Well, that's what you're doing if you have a large model and you're not using work sets. By this way, I'm, bro I'm breaking it up, similar logic to XREFs, breaking it into little digestible components and only load what I need. Now, for instance, let's say I'm only working on an interior and exterior skin. Well, I can say load the skin, load the interior, which happens to be called work set one. And I hit OK. So the only thing that's loaded in here is that. Now, it gets a little scary sometimes when you go, let's say, level one. Where's, where's my grid? Ah, where's my grid? Well, your grid's not loaded right now. Okay, and that's going to work more with the next group in a moment, but I can load that up. So what you do here, you have the ability to load on an as-needed basis. This is going to save on speed, save on system resources. So when you need to move around, you're not hitting these little boundaries where it's going to take 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds to reload the drawing. So break your um, models up into work sets, and then they'll be easier to use and utilize. Now, there are lots of other tools you can use with work sets, and it's good to understand the logic and how the file's set up. But I just want to show you the overview of how to break them into work sets. So uh, this is just one aspect of work sets. I recommend you read up on work sets and understand all the aspects before you actually um, uh, dive into this, this tool here. Okay, well, that rounds up the first video. When we come back, we'll talk about how to interact with other disciplines now that we've broken this into work sets.